Hello there, my name is Annette with Sunbeam Fabric Art. Welcome to my channel. Over the past few days, I have taken the time to match up some finished quilt tops with the correct size of batting and the correct size of batting and make a stack of ready to finish quilts. I matched quilt tops with batting and backing until I ran out of batting. Well, I have quite a few quilts that are ready to go, ready to finish. However, I only have enough basting pins to do two projects. So let's get started and finish a quilt and a table runner. The two projects I'm going to finish in this video are not my work. They are patterns I have purchased. I will leave links in the description. I decided to start with the table runner first since it was a little bit smaller project. I am going to be stitching straight lines on either side, on both sides of my stitch line here. As I finished these quilts today, I did not use my walking foot. Now the walking foot is useful for quilting. Um, it will add feed dogs to the top of your project so that the fabric will move through evenly. But I found that I really did not need those for the two projects I worked on today. Once I got to the other end of the table runner, I turned the project 180 degrees and stitched back down the other side of that seam. I made a few passes doing these straight lines on both sides of my seam. And here is a look at the stitch lines on the front and then how they look on the back. The next thing I'm going to do is trim all four sides of this table runner and then I'm going to add binding. I found some pretty fabric in my stash that I thought would look nice on this project, so I simply stitched 45 degree angles to join two pieces of two and a half inch strips together, then I trimmed away the excess and then I pressed those seams open. After all the pieces were joined, I pressed the two and a half inch strip in half. For the leading edge of my binding, I fold down a 45 degree angle on the two and a half inch strip, fold the strip back in half, and this creates a pocket I will tuck in the end of the binding into later. I'm going to start stitching this binding to the back of the project. I'm going to make sure that pocket is open and I'll, pro I'll start stitching about four to five inches past that pocket. I'm stitching this binding to the back of my project. When I get to the end of a side, I stitch off the corner at a 45 degree angle 
Then I fold the binding up, then back down, as you will see here. And then I keep stitching on the next side. When I make it all the way around my project, I'm going to trim for the pocket. I'm going to make my little cut at a sa the same angle as the pocket, but enough extra that I can tuck into the pocket. Then I will finish stitching this binding on the back side of the project. Now I'm going to finger press this binding and flip it around to the front side of the project. I'm going to use my clips to clip it in place. I don't always use clips. In fact, on the very next project you're going to see I did not use clips. Once I made it all the way around with my clips, I started stitching my binding to the front using a zigzag stitch. Now, if you're a beginner, you will want to do a little test block and see where on your machine, whatever stitch you're using to stitch it back down is going to show up on the back. In my case, I've got it lined up right where I want it so that on the back, the zigzag stitch will show but it'll show in a way that doesn't look odd. Well, this table runner turned out just lovely. Well, that table runner got me warmed up and now I'm ready to finish this beautiful, beautiful quilt top. And again, I will leave the information on this pattern in my description. My sewing machine has a few different stitches. Today, I'm going to do the quilting on this quilt top with stitch number 20. I am starting in the very center of this quilt and I am stitching this wavy line on top of a seam line. Once I have the two center lines completed, I next moved over to the right side of the quilt and then I flipped the whole thing around and did the other side of the quilt. And I just kept going back and forth and back and forth on top of seam lines with this wavy line. I really like quilting quilts this way because there's not a lot of thought, just making sure you're sewing a straight line. Mm -hmm. 
Once I finished all the quilting, I took this to my cutting mat and I cut with a ruler and a rotary blade nice straight lines on each side. And I'm doing this binding the same as the table runner. I'm attaching it to the back of the quilt first, leaving a little pocket open. Once the binding was completely attached to the back, I flipped it around to the front, and again, I'm using a zigzag stitch to attach it to the front. I can't tell you how happy I am that I finally finished this quilt. I bought the pattern several years ago. I made six blocks initially, and it has been in a drawer ever since. I was on a quilt retreat about three weeks ago, and I was able to finish this quilt top. Thank you so much for joining me today for these two projects. I hope to see you back again real soon.